name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, how important it is to remember our, our end. To remember that all of these things that we're, that we're going through every day, it's, it is only for a time. And that in all of this, in all of this, we, we often lose track of that eternal perspective. Today's Gospel reading, the Sunday of the Last Judgment, reminds us of that how we live now, how we live now, every day, every moment, every second, has an eternal significance. That every action, every word, every thought, everything that I cultivate in my heart, everything that I do or don't do, has that eternal significance. And today's reading, today's Gospel teaching, is not our Lord's only word on the judgment, is it? In fact, at different times, he brings forth different aspects, not least of which next week we'll, we'll highlight that importance of forgiveness, that our hearts be open. At other points, highlighting the necessity of, of fervent faith in our Lord. But what's amazing about the Gospel we see is that it's not one category or another, but all of these, if we have truly a living faith, if our Christian faith is alive as it should be, then these are all together. Our hearts are willing to forgive, and as we see today, we are, we are able to, to love, to serve in an active and realistic, in a, in a very real and concrete way, not an abstract way. I'd like to, to share a little bit right now from, from Father Alexander Schmemann on today's reading, which kind of highlights one of the, the pitfalls we can run into with this as modern people. Uh, Father Schmemann explains that today's parable is essentially about, about love, not a mere humanitarian concern for abstract justice and the anonymous poor, but concrete and personal love for the human person, that is, any human person that God makes me encounter in my life. This distinction is important because today more and more, he writes, Christians tend to identify Christian love with political, economic, and social concerns. In other words, they shift away from the unique person and its unique personal, its unique personal destiny to anonymous entities such as class, race, or things like that. Not that these concerns are all wrong. It is obvious that in their respective walks of life, in their respective, in our, in our responsibilities as citizens, as professional people, Christians are called to care to the best of our possibilities and understanding for a more just, equal, and generally more humane society. All this, to be sure, comes from, stems from our Christianity, but it can be inspired by this, but it's not the same as, as Christian love in, in an individual, concrete way, which we are called to have. That is, but Christian love, as such, he writes, is something different. And this difference is to be understood and maintained if the church is to preserve her unique mission and not become a mere social agency, which is def which she definitely is not. Christian love is the possible impossibility to see Christ in another man, whoever he is, and whom God in his eternal and mysterious plan has decided to introduce into my life. So we have to understand this. It's not to say that we should give to humanitarian organizations, which in fact we will um, given the world conflicts, we'll be taking a, with, the, with the war, which we'll talk about a little later, we'll be taking humanitarian collection uh, next week for that. Not that we don't give to charities in our own community. These are all good things, but the point is, is missing the points. Not to say missing the point entirely, but the, the point of the judgment is what is the state of my heart? That's what God looks for. When we stand before our Lord, is do I have a, a heart that has shown forth the works of love in a real way? Or did I, in a sense, try, try to get out of my responsibilities one way or another? And the way this can manifest is very, very simply, am I able to show compassion to those who I might be inclined to overlook? To those who I might be having a difficult time with? And especially, is highlighted in today's reading. Do we care for the, the least of these, my brethren, for the poor, the outcast, the forgotten, that God especially, our Lord Jesus Christ especially identifies with? To feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick and the imprisoned. 
Of course, we recognize that this is not all-encompassing, but it's certainly a, a, a start that we have to realize that our Christianity must be practical, too, in a concrete way. I was reflecting on, on this la last two years as well, when we've had it within, within our own society, uh, various divisions and, and tensions rising. I think that's fair to say, what, do we, what can we do with it? What can we practically do? And sometimes these thoughts can be overwhelming. The more I come back to it, it is to, in a very real and concrete way, to express our Christian love for our neighbor right here in our own life with the people that God places into our life, starting in our own community, starting in our own community. And we have to, to see this because more and more, and we see it now as a terrible war has, has broken out. With, with this with this latest invasion. You know, there's the tendency, the danger, right, to divide people into 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 friends and enemies, right, and to, and to divide one's heart into ways that are, are, are terrible. In order to overcome this, we must exercise concrete acts of love to see the image of God in each and every person, especially those who we be inclined uh, to want to overlook or to pass over, or that have or that have hurt us in all this way. And this is what, what God calls us to love, not just our neighbor, but even to love our enemies. His brothers and sisters, we operate on the order of, the, of this world. If we're always seeking to return evil for evil, right, to right wrongs in this sense, the cycle continues. When we stand before our God in the judgment seat, we're not going to be able to blame someone else. We're not going to be able to say, well, it's this person's fault I didn't do it, or that. Our Lord will look at our heart and say, did you, did you love with my love? Did you love with my love? Did you, did you witness to my love in this world? In where you were placed, did you make this world a better place? Did the light of Christ shine? And we're called to that. We're called to that. It can seem overwhelming though, but the beautiful thing is that it's little by little we can make these transformations. When we look at the sheep in the parable, What's striking about them is that they don't know, their right hand does not know what their left hand is doing, does it? In the words of our Lord. They don't even realize that they have visited the poor, fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and so on. They're not even in a sense conscious of it. It's become such a rooted habit, if you will. So much a part of who they are. Well, how do you think they got there? Did it come overnight? Were they born that way? I don't think so. I think it was with any any habit that we cultivate, it begins with that difficult part of forcing ourselves to move outside of ourselves, to be a little bit vulnerable, and to help someone, to encounter someone, to reach out, to not say no, to not say I'm too busy, to not close off our heart immediately. And what happens is that the little by little, the more we can do this, the more we don't just shut down and close off and wall off our heart, the heart of stone little by little becomes a heart of flesh. And this transformation takes place. Today's gospel reading, it's sobering, but it's also hopeful. It's hopeful because God lets us know exactly what we can do to be His sheep, what it is like, and what other place would we want to be than among His flock, than to be among the faithful of our Lord. And so, with this, this inspiration for this, going forward, especially during the time of Lent, to not be stuck in our, in our own comfort zone, our own isolation, and especially not to be isolated through our, our anger, resentments, no matter how justified they may be. We have to, we are called to come through this in love, to force ourselves, and little by little, our hearts will be transformed, will be transformed. And this is what gives this is what gives hope to the world. This is itself what can change the world. We want to change the world and begin by changing our own heart. That's the deception of the age. We can always think that the problem is somewhere else. We start here. This transformation, my own actions, my own, through what I can do differently, that can change little by little. That can change the world. It has a real impact on the lives of those around us. We, have, we are called to be the hands of Christ in this world. We are called to be the voice of Christ, encouraging, comforting, lifting up. 
So let us be that as we go forward to Great Lent. Let us be inspired by today's reading to go forth and with our faith to live the acts of Christian love to the glory of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. To be glory with His Father from everlasting, His all holy good and life giving spirit now and ever to ages of ages. Amen. Thank you.